said, and the market has looked through that as well in some style, especially here in India. In the US, the S&P is just 2% away from its highs. Uh, so, you know, remarkable stabilization across markets. What are you most excited about, uh, Ramdeo ji, uh, at the conference? What theme, what would you like to hear uh, over, over the next couple of days? Uh, what would you keen to sort of, it's not just what you are telling investors and they'd want to hear, hear from you. What do you want to hear uh, from uh, the people who are gathered there for the conference? Yeah, good morning, uh, Prashant. And uh, actually, uh, this is a wonderful time post election and post uh, budget and all. This conference is coming up and we, have, we are seeing very wide participation from the corporate side as well as from the uh, fund side. Uh, a lot of FIs are coming in today. So I'm looking forward to talking to them. So I have two objectives to figure out. One is sitting through the uh, corporate meetings uh, and try to figure out what's happening on the ground uh, because uh, the recovery post-COVID has not been across the board. I mean, there has been some patches where like consumer and all, FMCG and all have been very slow. So what's happening there? So we have uh, uh, Godrej uh, consumer uh, coming up and uh, Hero Motocop will start the session, one session immediately after. So there are a whole lot of corporates we have designed to get two things uh, uh, for the uh, people who are attending the conference. One, to figure out what's happening on the ground uh, across the sectors, uh, where the uh, uh, bright spots and where are the challenges. Second, what's the behavior likely to be of the FIs? I mean, FI is a big player in the uh, Indian context. Of course, because of retail participation, the importance of FIs uh, is kind of reduced, but still uh, they are very large players and uh, their, uh, their participation, uh, particularly on the upside, uh, buying side, can uh, further fuel the markets, what we are seeing in the last two years. So uh, these two aspects are the key focus points for me. All right. Uh, very interestingly spoiled, uh, spelled out, uh, Mr. Agarwal, out here, uh, you speak about uh, on the corporate side, how's demand and on the investor side, how the FIs are looking at the Indian market. You know, we talk about bull markets climbing walls of worry, the multiple mountains of worry that we've crossed over the last uh, month and a half or so itself. But now the bull market itself has become a bit of a cause for worry, largely because of everyone talking about valuations and the kind of euphoria that we are seeing in a lot of the stocks. Um, is there any hint or tinge of risk among all the participants who are there around? Is there, uh, you know, any sort of worry that people are uh, talking about? So this early in the sense that we have just about, uh, I mean, this is early morning, they're just coming in, pouring in. So uh, through the day, as we interact with them, we'll get to see more probably one-on-one -on -one meetings in the evening. That will open up uh, their concerns, their excitement about India. I mean, I think the only concern, even among the domestic investors and global investors, is the uh, valuation. Uh, global investors have a choice not to come or go to some other markets, buy stocks somewhere else, or not buy at all. Whereas domestic investors don't have any choice, but to, if at all they want to buy, they have to buy India. So, uh, so that's a fundamental difference. And uh, so we have to gauge the mood uh, about the FIs and what I had seen uh, two months back, I was in U.S. and I, 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 what I felt was they were waiting for the election event to get over and then they will take a fresh look at India. So whether they, they, they are as positively inclined as the domestic investors, that we have to see or will the valuation keep them away. Uh, so it's a, I think uh, uh, we, can, we can talk about it only after two days, not now. Mm. Uh, uh, Ramdeo, good morning. Great to see you there from the conference and then the buzz is, uh, you know, quite uh, uh, palpable. We can feel it here in the studios as well. Uh, you know, the one uh, corporate conversation that I would really watch out for and would want to know what the outcome is, is uh, from Hero Motor Corp. I think you have uh, some members of the management who are, who are joining in. And these are very, very interesting times for the two-wheeler segment, right? Because you have Bajaj turning on the competition by launching that CNG bike. You have Ola really turning on the competition by getting into motorcycles as well. And look at the Ola stock around there. It's almost doubling since listing. So markets we know can swing to extremes, extreme fear and extreme greed. Where do you, do you think we are on a business like Ola? And in general, you know, what's your sense on two-wheelers? There's so much happening here. 
Yeah, so uh, as the bottom of the pyramid picks up, I mean, when the trickle down happens and bottom of the pyramid picks up, the demand for two wheeler has to uh, just explode because the penetration still uh, has a scope to move up. And uh, for last two, three years, they were slow immediately after COVID. So a lot of replacement demand has also likely to happen. So my sense is that demand for two wheelers uh, is going to pick up. Uh, but that's whether it is happening in aggregate. I mean, yeah, the excitement of uh, Ola for their market share, the excitement of uh, new business model, uh, those things are there. Uh, but uh, uh, actually what is happening on the ground, that will come to know when we meet uh, Hero Management and uh, Ola Management or whosoever are there from the, uh, from the industry. So uh, I, I would think that the best is ahead for the industry uh, as we go forward, recovery will pick up. I think we've seen the first quarter result. The first quarter result was fantastic uh, for Hero. And I think uh, they are going to get back uh, their volume uh, pickup uh, in the, uh, because monsoon is very good. So the post monsoon, I think when the crop time comes, my sense is demand will be quite buoyant. Mm. Uh, I've got that. Uh, <clears throat> Ramduji, you know, one of the other names, uh, by the way, Zomato at the conference? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, they might be there as a uh, uh, company meeting, but uh, they're not there on the CEO track. I see. I see. I mean, uh, we, we're getting uh, newer yeah, and newer yeah. ways of assessing demand, right? Weekend orders. Yeah, I'm sure you would have seen, uh, and and the uh -huh. the pace of ordering. It's something that you've been. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you have to do it now every weekend. On Monday, we had to see what the weekend was like, like we do for movies sometimes. But uh, incredible run. I mean, uh, and, and you've been bullish. You were early on. You've been bullish. But at a fun level, you've also been booking profits there, Ramdeoji, as far as Zomato is concerned. Uh, yes, just yes, what's, yes, the, yes. what's the thinking yes. uh, overall? And, and uh, you know, how much do you own? Uh, how much did you start with at the peak? And how much do you own now as far as that position is concerned? So that, uh, I mean, at mutual fund level, those positions keep changing. But uh, what you said is right. What uh, what kind of thing we accumulated at sub-100 level uh, after the uh, first correction, I think uh, quite a bit of that we have uh, sold at a mutual fund level. But uh, exit position, I would not know uh, as of uh, yesterday or today. Uh, but significant uh, trimming has happened as, as the prices have moved to 200 plus. Uh, I think even fund managers, they also get a little jittery when the stocks move like this and they do they do like to uh, book some profits so that next opportunities they can uh, they can bet on and also because of risk management when the portfolio uh, size goes beyond 10% right. uh, regulatorily also you have to trim it and uh, even as per our own style of investing we bring it down to 6-7% kind of thing so I think uh, all of these have led to some kind of profit booking but my outlook for the industry still remains extremely buoyant in the sense that uh, it's a, uh, inter this is a this is the largest internet business uh, how and it is one of the largest opportunity one is tapping in quick commerce particularly so i think right. uh, the best is yet to come again in uh, this particular segment you know, uh, the, the wealth creation uh, metric that you have, uh, Mr. Agarwal, it's usually about the size of the opportunity, the improvement in margins and the underlying valuation re-rating which uh, may come about as well. For Zomato, we've seen a fair amount of that, but the size of the opportunity still remains. I wonder your thoughts in particular on Trent, because there is a CEO track out there. Trent continues to compound at upwards of 80% when it comes to earnings. Valuation re-rating has happened, I mean, over 130 times one year forward earnings. What more are the triggers for wealth creation out here? What is it that you would like to hear from the management of Trent at the CEO track? Yeah, so yeah, the valuation part, I mean, businesses are very exciting. What they're doing, what they're achieving, that is very exciting. But the, the valuation part, which is uh, happening at 100, I mean, the pace at which, even see, if you look at the Ola listing at 76 and now, 140, as you, I've heard about it, I think 140, 135, 140. So the kind of demand which is there uh, in the system and uh, all the fund managers are sitting on cash. So uh, valuation is one thing which uh, is becoming difficult even for most bullish person like me to justify. So wherever there is a predictable growth, we are seeing massive demand. And uh, at times, the prices are running ahead of the val underlying value. So I would, I would think that uh, uh, prices, uh, even in Trent, uh, has reached a, a level which is uh, 
very difficult, very difficult to understand. But there is a momentum in the in the company's performance as well as in the price. Mm, that's a, that's so. Interesting sort of a dilemma. I think that a lot of fund managers are confronted with, and you've beautifully summed it up, sir. Uh, that the businesses, underlying businesses, might be great, but at what price do you keep buying them? So, uh, Ramdeo ji, then tell us what excites you. I mean, uh, if we simply, uh, you know, try and marry the two, where there is underlying momentum, growth, business potential, and valuations have not turned completely sort of out of whack. Uh, what, where is that, uh, uh, you know, uh, that space in the market, if you see it at all? Yeah, so, uh, uh, so one of the things is that uh, newer opportunities are coming up. Uh, like I said, all these digital companies, digital companies were kind of uh, uh, not down and out, but uh, were out of favor. So at, uh, all the PSUs were uh, another segment which was completely beaten down at some point of time and became darling of the market. Right now, say, banking sector, is uh, completely out of, I mean, it was darling of the market for decades. And that's where the FIs uh, put a lot of money. And today it has not done well because they have also sold a little bit of it. But when you look at the fundamentals, I mean, I was looking at my presentation and there one of the slide is about uh, the quality of, uh, quality of uh, NPAs or quality of assets, uh, credit quality in the banking system has been, I think right now it is the historically the best and it is becoming even better. And if you look at it, while the business is growing at 15-60% and quality of asset is the best and it is likely to remain better as we go forward and yet the valuations are at the lowest. So I think the market does this funny thing. Uh, so and that, that, that is what throws you opportunity. So I would think that uh, uh, you have to be a little contrarian or little, you have to buy into something which is unpopular but you have conviction. So, uh, so that's, that's what and it's not that all the sectors, 50, 60 sectors, it's not that all of them are uh, uh, in un unreasonable version. Uh, there are 10, 15 sectors or segments which are uh, reasonably priced or mis uh, underpriced. I think that's where you have to pick up the stocks. And, and which one of these uh, would you like the most? You're saying there are about maybe 10 to 11 segments at least, which are still reasonably priced. Out of these 10, 11, yeah. which, would, which would, be the, would, would be the ones that you like the most, Randev? Uh, I would I would look at still BFSI and uh, in that capital market as I uh, uh, also I have told capital market still looks very exciting. You look at last month uh, DMAT addition, it was almost all time high four and a half million. So the way market is expanding, the the way flow is, I think capital market guys they are still uh, I think they are uh, the, the the growth in the segment is going to be quite significant and it is going to be very high quality asset like. So I would think the banking, uh, the private sector banking and uh, BFSI, they look to be good. Even insurance is looking up uh, very well. But uh, there are other segments in manufacturing and all. One can look at it, but uh, since I'm not that clued on to the day, day stock picking, I would think that this sector is uh, close to my heart and they look to be good. And it's likely, uh, uh, and for the capital market space, uh, a lot of the chatter was, you know, regulators trying to slow down, uh, trying to put some brakes, right? through all these regulations in the FNO side and you think that is now, yeah. uh, that bump is behind or uh, what's, speed bump, not a bump, but a speed bump is behind or, uh, and, and yeah. uh, does that ca cause any worry at all? Could there be more coming, what's the, what's the sense? Taxation go went up, the market hardly noticed, but uh, I mean it is happening, right? Some of these yeah. speed breakers are being put in. Yeah, yeah. So, I think uh, uh, regulators are putting some restriction on the expansion of the FNO market. Uh, but there is a lot of energy. See, it is about the energy, the, the participation. The money is coming in the market. Now, whether it goes into FNO, whether it goes into cash uh, market, see, once the restrictions come, then only uh, players will decide what is going to be their new game. Because the money is there, money is pouring in. So, I would think that with a little, a little break in terms of volume expansion, for a quarter or two, uh, and market will get adjusted to the lower earnings, lower volume, whatever. But uh, uh, I, I would think that in a year or two years' time, even with the new restriction, we'll see all-time new high in terms of revenues and profits from the players. Because uh, regulators can restrict the volumes or uh, who should play or what should be the uh, lot size and things like that. But uh, what the entrepreneurs will do in response to that, that is yet to be seen. So I would remain, if the business is growing, participation is more, funds are flowing, I would think uh, the capital market in, in general 
despite regulators' concern, will do very well. Right. Uh, you know, on uh, taking, going back to the Zomato point itself, quick commerce as an opportunity is a large opportunity. Everyone's talking about the sort of, uh, you know, runway for growth that there is. But increasingly, there are more competitors raising a fair amount of funds as well. Flipkart started Flipkart Minutes, for instance. Zepto is raising funds at uh, breakneck pace out there. Uh, so, do you think the strategic significant advantage of Zomato in that will continue? Or... Uh, at some point, it becomes a two-three player market. Even today, it is two-three player market. Uh, I mean, in quick commerce also, you have Insta, yeah. you have Blinkit, and now Zepto has. Uh, Zepto is building up very quickly. Zepto is presenting tomorrow. Uh, right. A very uh, wonderful story to listen to. Uh, there will be a lot of excitement out there. So again, you know, uh, they're all. Uh, bit away from the serious money making but the pace of growth 100% 80% compounded I think the compounded growth of about 70-80% or even 100% uh, I mean in just five years time you look very three or four years time you look very different and once the operating leverage starts working from say from negative 2% or 3% net margin to 2% 3% 4% net margin you can do the numbers on a large turnover of 10-15 billion dollars uh, <coughs> The, the numbers will achieve. And another thing is that it is going to be a very asset-like. So free cash right. will be very, very large. Economic profit will be high. So this is a uh, completely different environment, different type of companies, different growth levels, different free cash flow, uh, and a very sustainable, visible kind of demand in growing economy. To today we are a, a, a $4 trillion economy. In 10 years' time, we will be $8 trillion economy. Now in $8 trillion, your consumer demand will be at least 3x more than current levels. And the players will be only three. So the growing demand, uh, consolidated pl uh, playing field, and then the margin expanding. People want convenience in India. So I think it's a very exciting time for these companies. You know, Adit uh, of Zepto had said that in the next couple of years, they'll be bigger than DMART. Uh, I just wanted your thoughts on DMART. Uh, what are you thinking about DMART? Because Blinkit has said they are not gaining any share from DMART, or they are not eating into their shares. The segment of the audiences are different. But if consumption has to increase and value conscious consumption has to increase, is DMART an opportunity currently? Uh, no, DMART has its own uh, customer base and I think still in, uh, they have not covered the geography the entire country. So, uh, I mean, if you go to the developed market also, uh, I think uh, uh, this uh, organized, uh, organized format stores, they have a role to play because uh, Ultimately, this quick commerce, uh, online buying and all, it can take care of some uh, portion for the convenience, but the bulk of the buying happens from the stores. So I think uh, DMART has a different segment and they will keep doing well. Uh, just that uh, DMART might be growing at 15-20%, where these guys are growing at 80-90%. And 80% growth is not 4x, 80% growth is like 20x. So that, that has to be uh, understood in the mind that uh, uh, four, five times more growth on the top line and bottom line is not 4x for the valuation. Mm. Uh, Ramdeo, I want to get your attention back to Ola. I mean, how can we not, right? And I think uh, our viewers will really benefit a lot from your wisdom. You've seen this for decades and decades, right? So now here's a new business. And I guess timing is also very interesting because we were just discussing Zomato. Zomato has proved to the street that good businesses can come. They can come making losses, but they can turn around. They can have sustainable growth. And maybe that's also having a rub-off effect on Ola, uh, apart from the scarcity issue that you described, right? I mean, to get good businesses, businesses at a good pricing. They offered this business at 76. The market is now almost giving them 150. Is it getting excessive? How should investors look at Ola? Uh, Subhi, so I'm, uh, I'm sorry to say that, but my knowledge on Ola is very limited, except that I know that they are clearly leader in their field. And uh, in two-wheeler particularly, I have seen being number one uh, is very important. So on the electric uh, mobility, they are clearly number one and uh, they have very dominant share. And uh, uh, so that dominant share is what market is very excited about. Because still, the transition from uh, IC to EV is limited uh, uh, and uh, so I think at some point of time it, uh, uh, as the transition picks up uh, uh, from uh, 
petrol vehicles to uh, electric vehicles i think they are there to in cash and their positioning is so strong that uh, it is it is going to be extremely difficult for anybody else to uh, uh, to uh, what do you call dislocate them from the current position and that's what market is saying that okay you are number 1 and i want to be in my portfolio even if it is expensive that's what i hear i don't think the current fundamentals per se would justify the price one is paying right now you, you know uh, ramdev let me ask you about what this means for the traditional uh, big boys right and you have been one of the earliest i think you know persons who picked out hero it was one of the stocks many many years ago that you you singled out now for hero moto itself the landscape is really changing right you have ola with this competitive fierce intensity they're getting into bikes and their bike is starting at 75000 there is bajaj which is always a challenger bajaj is saying we've got a cng bike now they want to also make inroads into the traditional uh, stronghold of 125 cc below uh, which was hero so for hero moto a company that you've loved and liked and tracked for so long what is the road ahead looking like see for them uh, both the sides are, see one one of the thing is that now the competition in the ic side is not coming in in the sense that new competitors are not coming there are three guys bajaj hero and uh, tbs they themselves are kind of fighting among themselves so if the market expands and uh, and the transition to ev is uh, remains slow in that case uh, they have the entire booty uh, amongst themselves and then on top of it the export market is also looking up so i think uh, uh, they have and also uh, at some point of time they will also become a dominant player on the ev side uh, it's not that ev ev is left out to uh, ola or uh, everybody has a ev offering and i am sure right. they will give tough competition but it, it, this is the, this is a problem of the what do you call uh, winners curse you know Got when it. you are so yeah. good with the old technology it is become it yeah. becomes very difficult to get into a new one yeah Ramzi ji, uh, let's uh, wind this conversation down. Uh, politics is back, right? On the annual, yeah. uh, the last uh, election results didn't did uh, barely sort of uh, cause any uh, breaks. But now we got state elections. Uh, although we don't have the date for Maharashtra yet, uh, uh -huh. but uh, we do have it for uh, Haryana, J and K. Uh, and and uh, w w what's your sense? Do you think uh, Maharashtra is a big one? Maybe it'll have a little later. Uh, but they'll have to do it because the assembly uh, sort of you know session ends on the 20 i think it's uh, 25th of november uh, if i'm not uh, mistaken so they have to do the elections uh, uh, i think 1st of october and then maybe mid october maybe a little later what's your sense C could it could it be mark, uh, a market moving event in that sense uh, because it's not very far away i would i would not be i i i don't think so i mean if if the uh, central election where uh, where the ruling party uh, lost its majority and we got in into some kind of a coalition government that didn't deter the market i mean what happens to us uh, how, how does a small one state election matter in the sense that yes it is important politically but as far as the stock market is concerned i think we have we have seen and got over it uh, much bigger event than what is ahead no that's uh, well put thank you very much uh, we we would love to go on but i understand you have sessions to go to as well and people are waiting to listen uh, to you yeah. if they're not be listening to you here on cnbc thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, ramdev ji have a fantastic conference and we'll touch base uh, in a few days after the conference is over and sort of i think as you yeah. said you'll have a better sense after speaking to people about those two th the two things you're trying to understand yeah. recovery on the ground and of course behavior of fii is something we started the conversation with thank you very much 80 points uh, on the nifty 24620 is where we are at and uh, it's looking pretty good we'll take a quick commercial break here we'll be speaking with the management of electronics mart india to discuss the their business uh, and of course the recent stake sale by promoters session